Hey guys, it's Jeff Lavery from BarnFinds.com here with my 1986 Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.3 16 valve that I acquired out of a Pennsylvania junkyard late last year. Now, if any of you have been watching the series as it's gone on for the past few months, you might say, this car isn't exactly the same place, nothing's changed. And you're partially correct, but I assure you in the next two to three weeks, a lot's going to happen. This car is going to go up to my trusted mechanic in Providence, Rhode Island by the name of German Motors. They're going to help do the basic homework that needs to be done to see if this car can and will run again. So that includes hooking up a new battery cable, running a compression test. Compression test is good, fingers crossed, then we can begin throwing some of the other parts back on this car that were removed when it went into the salvage facility. So that includes the radiator, the exhaust, things like that. And if we can get it running again, and running well, then we'll feel confident going into the other bits, which I haven't even begun researching yet in terms of what parts I need to get. The suspension. The suspension on these cars is somewhat complicated. It had a self-leveling hydropneumatic suspension in the back of the car, and very specific and expensive shocks and struts and all sorts of things that probably don't work anymore. But, like I said, first things first, is to see if it will even run, which, as I mentioned before, the salvage yard that I bought it from said it came in as a running driving car, and both the Carfax and auto check reports, along with a pile of maintenance records I was able to acquire from the dealers that worked on this vehicle, shows that up until the early to mid-2000s, this car was religiously maintained, fastidiously maintained. It was at a dealer for every scheduled appointment that it should have had, and that's incredible for any car that's well into its second or third decade on the earth, let alone one that is as specialized and costly to maintain as this one once it gets up in the years. So all that being said, the next big things are coming up, so we hope you come back to barnfinds.com to see those updates. But in the meantime, for today's video, I want to tell you about one of the more anecdotally interesting things about this car that when I first got it was missing and really kind of curbed some of my enthusiasm for it because this part that was removed from the car was so central to what a 16 valve was all about that I'll admit my spirit was crushed a little bit but through the wonders of this website barnfinds.com and the power of social media which I hate to admit is actually a thing I was able to find this part get it in my hands, get it cleaned up, and have it ready to go back in this car in the weeks ahead. So I'm going to show you that next, and be sure to come back here in the next few weeks to our website to see what happens with this 190 when it goes in for its first big checkup. This is what I'm so excited about. Yes, it's just an ordinary gas tank, but in a way it's not. See, the 16-valve Mercedes, because they were effectively track cars for the street and designed for competition use, came with a larger gas tank than the standard 190E models. So you can do the math here. Obviously, a bigger gas tank means fewer stops to fill up, so you can stay on the track longer, so on and so forth. In my mind, that's one of the coolest features of a 16-valve. It's this thing you don't even see. It's one of the most utilitarian aspects of any car is a fuel tank. But to me, without a proper 16-valve gas tank, this car lost some of its credibility. And as I mentioned on previous videos, because it went to a junkyard as opposed to just going to an insurance auction or something like that, they did all the things junkyards do, which means stripping the gas tank, draining all the fluids, cutting off the exhaust from the catalytic converter and back. So a lot of things were missing off this car that you might not otherwise expect to find gone if you bought a beater like this from a private seller. Uh, needless to say, given they only sold the 16 valve in the States for two years and the cars that are running driving need their gas tank and then make it even more complicated because every junkyard does the same thing even my popular go-to's like carpart.com were of no use because every if there's even one of these cars still in a junkyard they tell me the same thing like well we we took the gas tank out and scrapped the metal whatever so i was really concerned when this car got here and i didn't know the gas tank was missing that i wasn't going to be able to find one now like many of you i have little to no use for social media but i have to give it credit in this instance because a reader of barn finds found my instagram page and then through instagram said hey i just finished restoring my 16 valve and i bought a parts car from chicago that i'm pretty much done with do you want the gas tank i couldn't believe it i thought i was going to be looking for this for the next six months maybe even longer 
The gas tank was already in great shape. The car had been used regularly. It wasn't sitting for extended periods of time with a lot of gas in it, so it wasn't like the tank was rotten to begin with. But I still bought it on the spot along with a couple of other parts that are going to be helpful for restoring this 190 and shipped it up to a great shop in Medford, Massachusetts, which is a little ways north of Boston. It's one of the only shops I know of, in, in my area at least, that still professionally cleans out and reseals gas tanks. So I want to give those guys a plug because they've helped me twice now, both with my barn find 1980 BMW 320 that had been sitting with gas in it for about hmm, 15 to 20 years. And now with this car, the 190E, because uh, to be honest, in Rhode Island, there are no shops left that do this kind of work. Basically, the state has made it so costly to maintain the proper, I don't know, tanks and licenses and whatnot, environmental cleanup fees, that it's not profitable to offer a gas tank cleaning service anymore. So needless to say, Rogers Radiators is one of the only games in town, and these guys do great work. They, they do way more complicated stuff than this. They work with folks who have you know cars from the brass era with irreplaceable radiators that need to be stripped down, record, rebuilt. And so I had no doubt that when I came into this gas tank, it was going to go straight to those guys to get cleaned out and resealed, so that when it goes back into this car, there's no question that there's going to be any contaminants or things like that in the tank. So this is definitely one of the best signs for me that this project will move forward. I'm weird like that. I look at omens and see how things are coming together. I've had cars where it seems like everything was difficult, and it ended up being that car was just one that I hated. I didn't enjoy driving it. It was, you know, wasn't worth that much. No one wanted to buy it. Whereas cars like this, where things come together in a good way, there's an enthusiast network that wants to help each other out. There's people in my local area who, who want to work on it. Uh, all those things make me feel really good about this 190, despite the fact that it came out of a junkyard and has really seen far better days. So with that being said, I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to show you one other thing that explains why I'm so confident this 190 is on its way back to being on the roads. Now, if you've been a BarnFinds.com reader for any length of time, you know that my last barn find, or more accurately, farm find, was this 1980 BMW 320. This was a Euro-spec car, it's right-hand drive, has a carbureted 2-liter inline 6 motor that wasn't sold in the U.S. vehicles. I haven't updated you in a while, but I figured I might as well take this opportunity to show you. As you might recall, I bought this car with the engine in the trunk. It hadn't run in the better part of 20 years. It was never restored, never gone through, no rebuild ever occurred. It was basically a very authentic, very original Euro-spec car, but it still needed a full refresh, needed an engine rebuild, needed a suspension rebuild, needed some very light body work, nothing like what the 190 needs, but it still needed some time in the body shop. Ultimately, this took a little under two years to bring this car back to the condition you see here. Now, this was a really excellent starting point had very little rust. The paint was still rather amazing. This is better, for better or worse, this is 85% original paint. I had the hood repainted and the rear section behind the tail, between the taillights was redone to pull out a dent. But other than that, this is all original paint. So this car is a little bit of an outlier because it was, even though we had needed a full rebuild of all its mechanical systems, cosmetically it was a very strong car despite 20 years of inactivity. All that being said, this car had a lot of parts on it that were specific to a right-hand drive British market European spec BMW that was never sold here in this trim. So part sourcing was hard, some things had to be fabricated, other components had to be rebuilt. But the point is, I'm pretty confident that 190 will come back with flying colors because if this car can come back in a little under two years needing everything it needed after I found it on a farm in Connecticut where it hadn't turned a wheel in, like I said, 20 years, a 190 that, yes, has some rust and was in the junkyard and hasn't run in a little under five years, give or take, I think it'll be okay as long as the motor wasn't trashed. But even then, just like this car needed to have a few pistons made, it had, had to be cleaned up, you know, we'll do the same thing with that car if need be, and it can go into the body shop for six months while the mechanical bits are refreshed. But all that being said, uh, this is one of the best things I ever found sitting on a farm and largely ignored for two decades. So. I feel pretty good about taking a 190E Cosworth that sat in a junkyard for three years and prior to that was seemingly a fairly loved and well-maintained car. All that being said, I can't wait to show you guys what happens next, so stay tuned and we'll have that car for the shop in the next few weeks 
and we'll do a live video of the compression test and hopefully the first startup. So thanks for watching and check back to barnfinds.com for further updates on all of our project cars. Take care.